Hey guys, Ultimate WWE Legend here, and I'm going to be giving you my WWE Raw review for this week. Now, the show kicks off basically with Sam Punk and Paul Heyman coming to the ring, and with Paul Heyman in the with the urn in his hand. Punk talks about people not liking, uh, people saying that he that the Undertaker is un. Um, unbreakable and how the dead man is unstoppable at WrestleMania, which is true. He's very hard to um, make, um, it's hard to make the Undertaker crack and it's hard to beat the Undertaker at the biggest stage of them all, the big daddy of the WWE or Mac Daddy, whatever you want to call it, WrestleMania. He, he just says, Punk just basically says uh, he doesn't know what people's talking about and he can beat him, he, the streak is not much to him and even with so-called Undertaker's magic, that's what he said, I can still beat him. The Undertaker is defeatable. He is powerful. I, um, he, he thinks he's powerful and stuff like that, but he still can be beaten. Punk was just talking trash about The Undertaker and everything like that. And then um, he said how Taker has a perfect record at WrestleMania, will rest in the lights and go out and the bells toll. So, what do I think about that segment? I probably give it a six, a a four point five out of five. It was pretty good. I liked it. It was good hype. Um, should have been better, but it was all right. Then it was supposed to be Van Dag Van Dango was um, wasn't actually scheduled for a match. But it takes the mic and in, um, and was going to say his name. But then Chris Joker interrupted him. Joker runs down and spears Van Dango. Then uh, Michael Cole mentions that this match is not scheduled. Van Dango escapes. Then Cole mentions um, Chris Joker was scheduled to face Dolph Ziggler tonight. Then Dolph Ziggler's music hits and come. Then comes out AJ Lee and Big A Langston and. Yeah, I'd give that segment probably a 3 out of 5, maybe a 2.5 out of 5, but yeah, just being generous by giving it 3. Dolph Ziggler vs. Chris Jericho, nothing in it, Chris Jericho beat him, a really, um, a really lackluster match, nothing, nothing really in it, wasn't really exciting or anything like that, so yeah, I'd give that a 2 or 2.5 two out of 5. That's all I'll give it. Then we see Mark Henry versus the Usos. This match, short match against uh, both of them, he managed to beat the odds in a handicap match and he won it. It wasn't a good match. I'd give it a, uh, another t uh, two out of five. That's how bad it was because it was so quick. Then we see Antonio Cesaro versus Alberto Dorio. Now, when I see a match with Antonio Cesaro these days, I can't wait for it. I'm ready for it because I really, really like. His moveset, his character, everything about him. My favorite part of his moveset is the uppercut that he does when he ch he throws the person up in the air and he does that, as you guys might know. I really like that. I fancy it too. And Alberto Doria as a face, pretty good. But uh, um, Antonio Cesaro managed to win the match, but it was by count out. Not fair and square, but by count out. So yeah, that, um, that match I would give a... Probably a a three, three out of five. It was good, but too short as well. Then we see Titus O'Neil and Darren Young versus Kane and Daniel Bryan. An easy match. Kane and Daniel Bryan. They didn't have a um, chance. The prime time players. This match not even close to good. But we managed to see um, Ziggler, AJ, and um, AJ Lee. Uh, what? Yeah. AJ Lee and um, Biggie Langston appear on the stage, and then Titus O'Neil comes to the back and stomps on Brian. And yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't, a, it was a very quick match. Cannon Daniel Bryan won. I'd give that a two and a half out of five. Then after that, we see Wade Barrett versus The Miz. Now this match was pretty decent. I'd, I'd probably give it a three and a half out of five. The Miz managed to win. Showing that he still got it, even as a babyface, because coming from that storyline where Ric Flair was going to give him the um, the figure four lock to put him towards being you know, a babyface and stuff like that. He's doing pretty good. I hope 
he gets a um, an intercontinental title chance and wins it because Wade Barrett doesn't really deserve it. I think The Miz does. Um, so yeah, give that yeah give that match uh, three out of five. Then we see The Shield versus Zack Ryder, Justin Gabriel, and the Great Carly. Didn't really like this match. I think it was garbage. Really, really big garbage. It was The Shield obliterated the match practically, and The Shield won it. That's how bad it was. It, the Shield are going uh, really. They justice is always served when they're around, and I still there's going they're going to be like that for a long time until someone finally shuts their mouth or dismembers them. But I don't see that happening until probably two, three months or maybe a longer time than that. I'd give that match a, t a two and a half out of five. Just being generous there, I'd probably give it a two if I was all right with it. Cody Rhodes and Damien Soundell versus Brodus Clay and Tensai. No, nah, not even a good match one bit. That was garbage, rubbish. What else can I say? That match was unbelievable. Shouldn't even be on Raw. It should be on somewhere like Superstars because of how bad it was. Um, it was Cody Rhodes and Damien Soundell won it. That's how... It would just didn't make sense to me, but mm, I don't know. I really I like Cody Rhodes as a character. Damien Soundow is pretty funny. Brodus Clay and Tensai just really really bad. But yeah, that match a definite um, probably a two, two and a, two out of five. That's how bad it was. Then it was Ride Back versus the Three MB. Ride Back smashed the shit, living shit out of all three of them. He was the winner, and basically they had no chance as soon as they got into the match. He dominated them like a superstar we all know. I don't know if you guys love him, but I know that I really, really liked him, whether he was in WCW and then he was in WWE, Gold Bill Goldberg. He was a great superstar, and I hope one day he returns because there's been a lot of rumors saying that he's going to return, but every time that happens, he manages to shut him down, but... Hopefully, just hopefully, WWE decides to just make him appear one more time for a match of a lifetime to excite us. I hope he, um, at least WrestleMania 30, they put him in a match that we all want to see. So yeah, probably give, yeah, I'd probably give that match a two and a half out of five. Then we see AJ Lee versus Caitlin. Winner by counter was AJ Lee. Nothing in it. AJ didn't really do much. Caitlyn did manage to attack AJ and show her what she's made of, but AJ managed to win by count out, which was nothing really in it. Then we see the Q and A with Rock and John Cena, where le um where we see legends ask John Cena and The Rock about the WrestleMania match. Basically, he says, Rock says he doesn't know about failure. He talks about being broke when he was younger, before he got his big break with the WWE. Rock says he flopped six months later with a knee injury. Rock says he worked, young, um, he worked his ass off and came back. He asked for one thing, a mic. Rock says two years later, he became the youngest WWE champion and main eventing WrestleMania in Very City. Basically, them two were to um, Rock and Cena were talking about what how it feels um, to be um, to go through failure stuff like that. Rock doesn't know what failure is. He doesn't. He do, um he does he does know about he actually knows about failure, but in a different way to Cena. Cena knows about failure by losing against The Rock, and in the match of a lifetime, which wasn't really uh, once in a lifetime, but now second time in a lifetime, I'm really not looking forward to it, but hopefully, just hopefully, it's better than last year, because The Rock was really rusty last year, and Cena dominated that match. Hopefully, both um, The Rock uh, steps up to the plate this year, and actually keeps up with Cena, because... He's very rusty, you can't blame him. He's an actor, he's not used to being in that ring. He needs to train way more and stuff like that. But yeah, Legends talked him up and everything and said to him, like they asked him, um, they asked Cena, Rock, say, Rock uh, says he's better also. Rock, um, Rock says if Cena had beat him, 
then it would be different. So yeah, and then um, Dusty says Cena and Rock need um, to take off their gloves at WrestleMania, and um, it's not ty- It's not about respect WrestleMania. It's about um, the better man who can win the match. Who is the better? Who's the stronger? Who's tougher? Who fought their life um, to win the match? Basically, I would probably give that whole um, that whole Q and A probably. A 4 out of 5 was pretty good. I was actually interested in all of it. I tuned in the whole time. No um, going to no toilet breaks, whatever. No food breaks, popcorn, whatever you want to say. Nothing like that. I tuned in the whole time. I was very excited for it. And it's pretty good from both um, opponents. It's good. And from the legends too. Now, like and subscribe, guys. And give me your comments and your opinions about Raw. What would you give each match? What would you give the pay-per-view overall? And if you guys want to ask me WWE questions or questions from out of the blue, whatever you want in general, you can just look up. Um, I got, I made an ask um, dot FM slash my name is um, I ask dot FM account, and this is the. Li- um, I'm going to put the link in the description. So click that and ask any question you want. It's um, ask dot FM slash alikudu1.com that's what it is and any question you want to ask me especially WWE I'm there all my subscribers I'm loyal to you guys any question you ask I'm straight away going to answer because that's what I'm about and tune in um, to my other videos I'm sorry for being delayed and not doing much videos but I got a lot of things on takes a bit of time to get back on track but I'm Gonna try my best to keep you guys updated always. Like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.